go ahead and get started. And I'm sure that Jesse can let them in once they once they hop on. So, well, good morning. And um, Kristen couldn't be here today because she decided that she wanted to go to Florida. And I can't really say that I blame her because I think we're supposed to get snow today. So <laughs> lucky her. Um, so before we uh, get started with our, um, our guest, I wanted to mention um, somebody, John Collette. He is going to be our, or he is our uh, Chambers 2021 Chair of the Board this year. And he's also graciously sponsoring all of our advocacy forums. So thank you, John and Wabash Valley Asphalt for your support this year. Um, like we previously mentioned, we're going to um, record today's um, conversation. So it'll be available on the YouTube page probably by early next week. So if anybody wants to revisit or share with those that were unable to attend, so feel free at any point to um, submit any questions that you have in our chat box. And then once everybody's done speaking, I'd be happy to address those questions. So um, I think I will go ahead and turn it over to team RJL and I'll let you guys introduce um, our guest speakers today. Okay, well, good morning, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Good, okay. Well, um, welcome to the first uh, third house session of the Terre Haute Chamber of Commerce 2021. Uh, thank you all for joining us this morning. Uh, a special thank you to our legislators. Um, I don't know if it's been more efficient or less efficient in your new world of Zoom, but I would guess that you, you have way too many meetings. Um, there was an excuse from having to get from point A to point B before that you currently don't have. So I hope you're surviving the Zoom legislative session. Um, it is uh, my pleasure to introduce the, the representatives that we have here today. Uh, first, Senator John Ford. Um, we also have a representative Tanya Paff and we also have Representative Alan Morrison. Um, he is driving this morning hands-free, so we cannot see his face, so good job, Mr. Morrison. Um, and then you can see, I believe, on your screen who else has joined us this morning. There, he, there we got a little bit of a glimpse, <laughs> so good morning. Um, I also want to acknowledge that we have Mayor Duke Bennett with us this morning, and Mayor, I know that we have been sending you lots of uh, things legislatively, so I'm assuming that you might have some questions, and we have some other individuals on here as well that have been receiving those same reports. So um, let's start out, first of all, uh, Mr. Collette, do you have anything you would like to add as a sponsor of this morning's um, session or as the president of the board? Oh, you're muted, sir. <laughs> I don't have much to add. I'd just like to welcome everybody to the forum and thanks for um, being here and especially to the legislators to let us know what's currently on, the, um, on their minds and um, what the future may bring. Thanks. And I know Jessica has already said this, but I want to say one more time, this will be recorded and shared. So just to remind you that that is the case. Um, so I would like to start out with, um, if it's okay, Senator John Ford, um, what I'd like to do is each of you spend about five minutes on or less on things that are prioritized in your particular area of focus this legislative session. Um, we will move on to the next and then the next. So uh, Representative Tanya Papp and then Representative Alan Morrison. Um, and then we will start addressing some questions. I did prepare some questions knowing uh, some of the things that we have been talking about at the advocacy level at the, at level at the chamber. Um, so I am prepared if nobody else is. So we'll start with Senator um, John Ford. Well, thank you. Good to see everybody this morning. Um, so we have started session, we're in our second week. Um, a few changes for me. My committee assignments uh, changed this year. So I'm on uh, public policy, um, appropriations, and then ranking member on child and family services and am chair of the election committee. So a lot of my session will be focused uh, as usual on family and child issues, but then also we'll be working on uh, a lot of election law issues and specifically the redistricting um, for the S Senate and House seats along with congressional seats. So that'll be a busy uh, change for me. Um, you know, this session for us has started off, I think, a little slower than normal. Um, it's uh, a little, it's a less chaotic, not as many folks in the state house. We've implemented COVID procedure policies. Probably the best one is that the house has moved out of the building and down the street. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we, our committees are a little different. We are in the state chamber. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we in the Senate side, we are open for testimony on committees. 
Uh, it's a little different this year in that if you're testifying, you're in another room and being uh, beamed in through Zoom onto uh, a, a screen in our committee rooms. Um, so there's a little less contact with folks, um, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, but still meetings are happening and legislation is, is moving forward. I think yesterday we moved some bills uh, out, out of the Senate. Um, for me, my focus, I've got a few bills. One, uh, once again this year, working on the divisible loads for some manufacturers in our area, trying to increase the weight limit that are allowed on trucks, uh, working on automated cameras and work zones, uh, working on a teen suicide bill that should hopefully move out of the Senate next week, and then misdemeanor reimbursement uh, bill that the public, local public defenders brought to my attention, which would basically, the state would fund, give public defenders uh, funds to provide defense for misdemeanor charges. But I, I, that's uh, kind of the focus. I have a few other things, but that's what's moving right now. Thank you, Senator. Um, save your questions. We will have questions for you here in just a little bit. So Representative Tanya Paff. Hey, good morning. Um, so this year I'm on, of course, three committees, uh, education again, elections. So Alan and I are both on elections again. And so whatever Alan and I decide to do, we're just going to push through and then give to John and he'll push through. So, you know, it should be no brainer. And then uh, I'm also, I got appointed to Ways and Means, which if, um, as you know, controls the budget. So uh, kind of a, a different emphasis for, for my side in that um, I'm, I'm really trying to grasp how the budget is crafted. I've had several meetings now and just uh, where that big pot of money goes and how it's spent. And um, so that's just really actually mathematically interesting and a complete mess, just so you know. Um, but they do a good job. So I personally am working on uh, no excuse absentee. I don't think you should have to check a box for why you're gonna be absent. We proved it worked in June. So that's one of my big pushes. And of course, redistricting. Um, as you know, how the maps are drawn right now currently, um, it's a little rough to make, uh, make fair bills in that all our districts are pretty gerrymandered. So I'd like to get a little more even in the middle. Um, we still have a, a teacher problem. Um, I'm being told that there's no money for teacher raises. So I'm sure that'll still be an issue. And uh, again, just like I said, working on the budget. It's interesting, as John said, because now uh, our walk of shame that used to go from 336 to the chambers now goes all the way down through the tunnels, all the way to the other building, where we sit in a very large room with plastic tables. So the uh, session is quite different. I think um, so far, one of my favorite parts is that all committee meetings have to be over in two, meet, two hours. So last year I was in education for about five nonstop. So two is, is fantastic. So that's it for me. Thank you, Representative Paff. Um, Representative Morrison, are you safe to, to talk? Yeah, yep, yep, okay, I'm safe great. to talk. I'm, okay. driving on, I'm on Route 40, so if I lose you, that's why. Okay, um, great. So real quick, I want to know who Representative Paff made mad. To be, she talked about having to be on the, uh, the five-hour education committee hearings. Um, being on education and ways and means, basically, uh, that's all you will do for the rest of your life every day. <laughs> right? That is, uh, that's, a, that's, a, um, that's a big load right there. But uh, she's, uh, she's more than capable, that's for sure. So, um, so yeah, we uh, like John said, and you know, kind of a bit of a slow start, but uh, uh, it actually kind of has made sense, really, because the first couple of weeks it seems like all we do is gavel in, hand down a bill list, and then back out. And um, so having uh, this time on a, on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, just to get committees done and and get some bills rolling, uh, and then just having Thursday session for the first two or three weeks doing it this way. I actually don't think it's all that bad of an idea. And I could, I could imagine seeing it move forward, thus kind of keeping with that, uh, that program, but time will tell. Um, just one thing real quick uh, sparked my, um, uh, my attention here. We we're talking about elections. So all of us are on elections and um, word is that we probably are not going to get the census numbers. 
uh, in time during sessions. So congratulations, uh, John and Tanya. We'll probably be able to be back there in June for a special session uh, to do, draw the maps. Um, and I'd like to point one other thing out about the maps. The last time that uh, the Republican uh, Party drew the maps, which was 10 years ago, we cut out 2,200 miles of border of, of uh, districts. And so basically what we did is we made the districts much more inclusive um, and we'll do that again. Uh, we try to keep communities of interest together. Um, just a great, a real big, uh, uh, just a, a great example was the little town of Staunton used to be cut in half. It was two, two separate state representative districts. So, um, you know, our, our goal is to keep communities of interest in, intact and, and uh, as much of school districts as possible. Um, and so that'll, that'll certainly be a big uh, uh, push of what we do. Um, House Bill 1006 is Greg Stewart That's a, uh, um, a law enforcement bill uh, that was, you know, that's been a big topic of discussion throughout the country over this um, past year. Um, and what we're doing is we actually went and, and worked with our law enforcement um, and, and we're making uh, strides to, to make everything more transparent, um, give them uh, more specific guidelines, give them better training. Uh, a, a big push is, is to certainly update and modernize the, uh, the police academy out there in Plainfield. Um, it is uh, kind of, uh, um, kind of well past due to, to uh, improve that out there. So um, you're not gonna see us defunding the police uh, or um, turning them into uh, the bad guys. They're, they're the good guys and we're gonna support them and, and do everything we can to uh, make their jobs uh, easier and safer. Um, we, uh, we've got a handful of other things. John and I are, are working on a few bills uh, working on some legislation uh, that Wabash Valley Resources uh, brought to us to uh, that will actually is a it's a great idea for um, not just for Indiana or not just uh, for them but it's it's uh, law in about 15 or 20 other states and it has to do with uh, legal emissions um, and then uh, and and not being able to be sued for things that are you are legally uh, uh, licensed to do from the EPA and from IDEM. Um, I've got a bill that it, it probably won't go anywhere this year, but it's worth putting out there and I'm, and I'm going to continue to push it. Uh, and it's, it does away with all hold harmless language, uh, in the gaming community. So as, as we all know, we'll be sending three separate payments down to Evansville from, uh, the, the casino here, that money, which should be kept in our community. Um, there's money that goes from Shelbyville and Anderson, the French Lick. <clears throat> there's money that goes from Gary to Hammond and, and uh, we do all these, we have all these different uh, uh, mechanisms that we're, we're taking money from one community and, and sending it to another because of a perceived loss in revenue for a casino in that other community. And, and uh, ultimately I just want to, I think we should wipe the slate clean. And um, I don't think any other communities that are sending money to others uh, are so uh, wealthy and well off that they can uh, that they can afford to do that. So, um, and then uh, we've got a couple other uh, pretty interesting bills coming through utilities and energy um, that uh, have have to do with everything from from water infrastructure still to uh, uh, solar or not solar but uh, wind farms um, and whether there's state or or county um, uh, control over those and and so. Um, and even though it's uh, it's quiet right now, there's going to be plenty of uh, um, you know big issues, um, also executive branch issues, and and how much power we uh, keep in executive branches in the executive branch, and also within other uh, uh, departments and as well. So um, there'll be plenty <laughs> plenty for us to discuss over the next four months. Thank you, Representative Morrison. Um, okay, I would like to do something a little different this time because everybody has shifted in regards to the roles and responsibilities they have either in the House or the Senate. Um, I think it'd be good for the group to know or those that will listen later. Um, Senator Ford, if you can talk just briefly about your new role as chairman of that committee and what that means um, you know, when you become a chairman of a committee and how that really helps benefit and lift up uh, really your district. You are muted, sir. 
one of these days I'll get this down. Um, so yeah, so being chair of the election committee, you know, we will, you know, really that committee obviously this year is going to hear a lot of different election policies. Um, you know, some that Tanya described, some that Alan described, but what as chair, you know, my role is to really, you know, shepherd legislation through that, you know, the caucuses want to hear. Um, this year, we've got quite a wide range of bills um, that are coming across everything from having to show your citizenship to register to vote to uh, to uh, the bill Tanya talked about. We have one of those in the Senate as well. But really, you know, the main focus this year is going to be uh, redistricting. And, you know, in the second half of session, that'll be uh, a really busy topic. As Alan said, we're waiting at the moment, really, for data to come in from the last census. Um, kind of, we're not really sure. We think we, we're supposed to get it in April. Like Alan said, may not get it till late. Um, and so we may have to come back into session or session may continue until June. I think leadership is still trying to figure that part out. But in terms of, um, you know, how it helps our communities is, you know, the more our delegation moves into leadership, the, the more we can, you know, draw attention to our communities. And so it's an, important that we all try to, you know, our delegation try to move up um, in terms of leadership. And I think this year, Ta you know, Tanya's moved up, Alan's moved up, Bob has moved, you know, has continued to be the whip. So, you know, our, our region is really well represented in terms of leadership at the moment. Thank you. Senator Ford, real quick too, on appropriations, um, I know that each member of the Appropriations Committee has a specific area of focus that Senator Mishler, the chairman, likes to offer. Can you just give a, a quick 30 seconds or a minute on what yours is and what you're working on? Yeah, so uh, this year I was assigned uh, the higher education budget. So really I've been spending the year learning all about higher education funding, the CARES Act funding for higher education, this weekend, I've got I don't know, a huge amount of paperwork to read on the latest relief bill from the federal government uh, on the federal on the uh, for higher education. So I'll be reading that and uh, really trying to figure out how what that means for our budget. But yeah, thank you. Thank you, uh, Representative Alan Morrison. I know that um, you have taken on a new role in the House as well. Do you mind just describing briefly what that role is? Yeah, uh, so uh, this, this uh, past off session, um, uh, Speaker Houston gave me a call and asked me if I would uh, serve as the assistant floor uh, leader. And I said, absolutely. So uh, our, our current, our, the, the floor leader is uh, Matt Lehman. Um, and uh, so there's, uh, excuse me, getting back in the truck. Uh, there are, um, there's two assistant floor leaders and then, and then Matt and, and so uh, what it does do is it affords me the opportunity to uh, be in some leadership meetings where we're talking about, uh, you know, the direction of, that we want to go with uh, specific bills or uh, agenda items or, and how to navigate. Um, I get to uh, interact at a at maybe a little bit different level with uh, some of my colleagues concerning whether there's issues within a caucus or trying to um, move move other legislation along or whatever it might be so um, but it's certainly a, uh, uh, a an, an, it was an, certainly an honor from to have the uh, uh, speaker Houston call me and and uh, you know give me that uh, um, responsibility and and uh, belief so yeah I look forward to, to doing it well congratulations I think <laughs> and yeah right yeah yep <laughs> And then Representative Paff, I know in your being, um, you know, in your second term and, and being offered the opportunity to be on Ways and Means, um, certainly that drew my attention uh, for many reasons, but I, I think obviously that they saw something in you to put you on that particular committee. Have I'm just curious, have they given you any specific areas of interest? Or are you just still trying to learn the, the lay of the land? And what are you thinking and feeling about all of that? It's very interesting. So I don't think we do the same thing as, as the leadership does on the other side. Um, so right now, what I get the pleasure of do be, doing is a lot of Zoom meetings and a lot of learning. So as you can imagine, um, there's a lot of state agencies. There's a, a lot of people that would like money and a lot of people 
small businesses and you know everybody wants help right especially in light of covid so my role right now is just sort of navigating um, and what makes sense and uh, trying to trying to figure out how it all works so i get the pleasure of a, a lot more zoom meetings we'll leave it at that how's that sounds good well we'll, we'll check in as we go throughout session <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to start out with the, uh, this is the Chamber of Commerce. So, um, you know, their mission is to preserve, protect, and promote businesses uh, from an advocacy standpoint. So I guess my big question to start us out with, and then anybody can start asking some questions. Let's talk a little bit about employer liability. Um, obviously, that's probably at the crux of everyone's mind, whether you're in business, higher education, or small, medium to large. Um, and I don't care which one of you want to address it. Um, first, uh, I'm assuming many of you, from what I could see, have been very engaged in this. So I'm interested in hearing your thoughts and making sure that everybody else in the chamber world hears them as well. So I don't, John, Alan, Tanya, I don't, I don't care which one. Oh, your I think your screen's different. I don't know who you're pointing to, Representative Path. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I was, I was pointing to John. I always like to have, let the, the good senator go first. That's yeah, up thanks. on my screen. So Jeff Hauser was okay. the <laughs> <laughs> um, So on the Senate side, we do have a bill. We, um, we had originally six versions of the same type of bill to give liability protection to businesses. So we uh, combined them. We have one bill. It's our Senate Bill 1, so our, our major focus for the year. Um, that has, um, you know, passed committee. Um, and we're kind of fast tracking that. So I think next week you'll see uh, that that should come off the floor. Um, and I can't imagine that it, it wouldn't pass. But really, the goal is to try to, you know, give some liability protection to businesses, to schools, kind of a wide range of entities, so that hopefully we can get people and businesses back to normal and not have frivolous lawsuits that slow the court systems down and, and slow people from coming back. Because some we've heard from some school superintendents that one of their fears is that, uh, you know, they would be burdened with a numerous lawsuits. So this will help them feel, feel safe and protect them from frivolous lawsuits. Thank you, Senator. Um, Representative Morrison, do you want to go next? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I believe that the, I, I'm sure that there are, in fact, I know that there's plenty of legislation in both chambers that have to do with this issue. And, and I, I know that the Senate is moving this one in particular. So um, it's a lot of these different issues that have popped up because of, of uh, the last year. Um, a lot of people have a lot of different ideas, um, but you know, ultimately we'll, we'll whittle it down to one, one bill uh, for each issue. Um, so, but to kind of piggyback on it, since we're in the Chamber of Commerce, uh, we, uh, I have a bill um, and it has to do with uh, essential and non-essential businesses and basically um, not being able to uh, treat uh, businesses with uh, um, the easiest way to say it. Um, the uh, chairman, Doug Miller and I were talking about it. He wants to give it a hearing. And we have a lot of different pieces of legislation that have to do with um, that, sort of that, that subject. Um, and it's everything about um, their, um, whether or not we can have uh, curfews to, to um, different businesses, uh, the power that the local health board has, um, which a lot of us have seen has been uh, uh, a big eye opener uh, about how much power they have, obviously, over, over our businesses, small and large. Um, so there is a lot of legislation that is, that is pointing towards that. Now, in the House, our, our main one is, is coming from Matt Lehman. Now, there was a, a working group of about 10 of us who worked on this all summer. Um, I like most of it. Some of it I wish was, we had a little bit more teeth in it, but that's okay. Um, you know, we just, it's, it's a good starting point. Uh, Ed Clear and I also have another bill which deals with health departments and again, uh, a level of the, um, there's bills out there that's not being able to uh, shut down churches. 
um, and uh, uh, church related uh, affiliated schools. Um, so there's a lot, a lot of that out there. And um, that's why I said over the, over the next four months, we're going to have plenty to, to discuss um, as we move forward. Yeah, Representative Morrison, we, we got most of that. You were cutting in, in and out just a little bit, but I, I think the uh, crux of that is there's going to be many bills that pertain to um, determining the uh, ability, influence, or authority that some leaders have to do certain things. <laughs> so. that, that's a very concise way to put it. Okay. Um, thank you. Representative Paff, change on my screen here. That's okay. Just uh, same same thing. Rest assured, you know, there are so many bills out there. Some of the committees haven't even met yet. So we went from five meeting spaces down to two. So in two weeks, um, a lot of committees haven't even gotten the very first push yet. So as Alan said, it's, it's going to come fast and strong very quickly. So it'll be interesting to see how this all plays out. Okay, thank you. What well, is 827? We've gotten through kind of the first part of this. I would like to save the next um, 15 to 20 minutes for sure with any questions any anybody else might have. I see that um, Mr. Eggie's on the call this morning with Brampton Brick, and obviously um, he's been working with Senator Ford for some time on the overweight divisible loads. So Chris, I don't know, I'm, I'm only calling on you because I see you on here. I know you've been working with on this for, you know, three years now. So do you have anything you would like to add to this this morning? Oh man. <laughs> no, uh, again, thank you for everybody for being here, uh, taking the time to join in. Um, like Rachel said, we're still pushing forward. Uh, Senator, Senator Ford is, is uh, leading that charge for us uh, on this uh, massive economic improvement for the state um, and not just for our industry. But it'll, it'll, the, way, the way it's headed now, it's going to help all industries. So um, kind of excited to see how it's going to end up. Thank you, Chris. Mayor? Yeah, I'll be happy to jump in. Let me just throw a few things out there, if you don't mind. I always get kind of in the crosshairs with the chamber sometimes when I talk about property taxes, or in this case, I want to start off with TIF. Um, you know, I, I every year, every session, I've been following this for a long time now, um, there's efforts to water down the TIF. And so I understand and, and know and have the background that there are some areas that have done some things with TIF that they, they were legally could do, but they probably shouldn't have been able to do. So I get all that. But now we're talking about pulling out money for schools and other taxing entities um, out of our TIF districts. And if that happens, then I'm going to have to find new revenue to replace that because we use those revenues to build infrastructure and do the things that we do in those TIF areas. And so once again, municipalities specifically will get a lose revenue and no way to make it up. You know, the, the county would have to raise a local option income tax or the state would have to do something else to help us out with that. So I'm not in favor of any pulling any money out of the TIF districts. Uh, maybe there's some other caps or things you can do. I and mean, we've already, we're bonded out. So that's the situation that we got into that really hurt us in Terre Haute a few years ago when the property tax cap came in. When they did that for the sanitary district, uh, we already had, we were bonded out. And so we lost, you know, $2 million a year that I was already paying on bonds that we just had to go raise sewer rates to make up for the $2 million to keep paying our bonds that we'd already taken out. It'll be the same thing with TIF districts, you know, bonds are on the table. So um, we'll have to make up or not do any more projects until the bonds are paid off. So I'm, I don't want to get, you know, too deep in that. And then just the school board member, you know, having the um, situation where the school board can put a member, a voting member on our redevelopment commission, then I would like to have a, a member I could appoint to the school board because, you know, they do things that I would like to have some influence in. And I just find that interesting that only school boards would have that opportunity. So I'm all about more money for schools, but you know, taking it from one place and shifting it to another and then leaving us, you know, <laughs> having to come back to the legislature saying we need new revenue doesn't make any sense to me. On the police reform stuff, we're already doing all that. So we had no problem. Our jail solutions did a great job of uh, letting uh, Chief Keene and I have a meeting with uh, Representative Stewart about his bill. And um, we're already doing all that. And so I feel really good about that, that particular bill. And then on the executive power thing, I know Alan's big on this one. Um, 
you know, when it, when it comes to executive power locally, I don't have much power. And so I can do an executive order for seven days and then I have to go to the city council. You know, the county has all the power and a lot of, when, whether you like it or you don't like it, they didn't exercise a lot of that power here locally, but I couldn't do anything about it. So I get beat up by our constituents saying, mayor, you need to do more or you need to do less. Um, but nobody understands how that power works. So I think as this shakes out at the governor level, which I think that's where the focus is at, we need to look at across the board to make sure we don't give too much power to anybody. And there are checks and balances, but not to restrict them as much as mayors are. I mean, we're very, very restricted, unless you're like Indianapolis, where you run the county government. Uh, for the rest of us, we only can run municipal government. So that's all I'll say about that. You said a lot, so that's good. <laughs> Do, does Senator Ford, Representative Paff, or Representative I, Morrison have anything you want to say about those things or have a discussion? Yeah, I, if I could, if, if I could chime in real quick, uh, Duke, good to see you. Um, yeah, something that he uh, that, that the mayor touched on there that he can have an executive order for seven days and then he has to go to the city council kind of the model that we're that put on the governor's side of it. And, and really we're not reinventing the wheel. There is one order within within uh, 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 Title 10. Um, if the governor has an executive order for more than uh, 60 days, that has to do with fuel. And now this came from, it, it has it has to do with fuel. Then then the, the uh, legislature is called back into a special session. Um, and it's something that really kind of almost, you know, nobody really knew about or, or paid any attention to, but it came into effect during the Carter administration when we had the uh, gas crisis. And so that little uh, uh, section was added. And so basically what we're doing is we're, we're taking that and, and now it's going to be less than 60 days. Uh, exactly where it lands, I don't know. I think it's sitting at 45 right now in the, in the draft legislation, but it could go up or down. Um, but uh, it, it'll be the same thing that if after X amount of days, uh, the, uh, the, the governor has to call in for, or give the opportunity for a special session. Um, and uh, he can either call it in or the, the uh, leadership of both chambers um, can decide on whether or not they wanna come back in. So um, we're gonna, we're kind of looking at it the same way uh, that we do it here in Terre Haute. Thank you, Alan. Senator Ford or Representative Path? Um, you know, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the TIF district changes. The mayor's right. Every session we come in and we seem to tinker with TIFs. And um, I think much of what the mayor referenced was also recommendation in the uh, teacher pay uh, report that came out. Um, and we'll see. I, I've not uh, really seen any of the legislation yet on TIFs start to move. But I'm sure we'll we will see. I was with a group of superintendents yesterday, about ten of them from around the area, and um, it it came up. They they clearly want to have a spot on uh, the redevelopment commissions, which I think many of them have spots, but they're non-voting positions now. So I think they would like to have a little more say in that, and we'll see. I'm sure we'll strike a balance on that, but. You know, I think, um, you know, the mayor's right. We do every year kind of seem to move the uh, ball on these municipalities on TIF districts. And it is because there's always a few bad actors out there. And um, so this year, I'm, I'm sure we will, you know, there's a lot of things on our plate and, uh, you know, the teacher pay and K through 12 funding is right at the top of the, of the list. Can I just say one thing real quick? So one thing about that, John, and, and well, Tanya and Alan and everybody, um, you know, we have five members of the Redevelopment Commission. I appoint three, the City Council appoints two. If we had a school corporation person in there that's, you know, opposed to what we're doing, let's say, I, you know, you never know who they might put on there. I mean, it could be a very interesting dynamic. So maybe the legislation should change to add seven members to still at least let the mayor, in our case, and in the county, the county, you know, executive branch control, at least have one more member so we can, whoever's in power can have some control there. You know, a, a three, three, five doesn't do us any good. And it just depends on who that member from the 
school board is. So just got to think, you know, kind of beyond sometimes the initial legislation about what those impacts might be. That's all I wanted to say. Okay, thank you. All right, I have a couple other questions, but I wanna open up to, I see um, we have um, Diane McKee with us this morning, Jeff Hauser and a few others. Um, any questions from the group? Feel free to unmute and ask your question. Uh, thank you, Rachel. I, I don't have any uh, questions per se. Uh, we've you know, spent time with uh, Senator Ford and, and uh, Representative Path and, uh, talking through our uh, priorities for higher education, and we're just very grateful that uh, for their support and, and Representative Morrison and Representative Heaton as well. We we have a great um, legislative delegation here locally, and we're we're uh, we'll be following all of the uh, bills that uh, pertain to higher education, and uh, we just thank you for your support and your willingness to serve the public. Thank you, Diane. Um, Jeff, I see you're on here this morning. Anything from the airport? No, uh, nothing from the airport. Again, I wanna thank the chamber and then uh, Alan, John and Tanya as well, because it really, I think it, it gives a lot of information uh, to a lot of people, especially now that you're doing it through Zoom. Uh, we're not putting everybody in one room, but uh, to catch us up on everything that's going on, I really appreciate it. And um, yeah. because I also serve on the board of the airport, I have to also just put in there just a little bit that, you know, we have, I think, Jeff, is it true that we're still one of the only three airports in the state of Indiana that actually have a TIF district on our property? Uh, I, I still believe it's three. Someone said four and I haven't found the fourth one yet. So I think it's three. So we would probably take the same position of, as our mayor here on that subject matter. So we'll be following that. <laughs> Heard there's a new restaurant out there, Jeff. Absolutely, come on out and visit. Um, it's a little bit different than some of them, but we uh, it's one of our former tenants that sells aviation supplies as well. So it's kind of a, a little shop for aviation supplies, but so far their grand opening uh, was on Monday and the, we have had no complaint. The food has been great so far, so stop on out. Okay. Also, Rick, also, yes, Rachel, um, I didn't really, I don't know much about this. So I just thought I'd throw it out there that um, House Bill 1004, which is Small Business Restart Program. Um, can you give a brief description of what that is? Maybe Adriana, I think you sent out something maybe yesterday or the day before. I did. Um, but hold on one second. <laughs> this is I did, John, but give me a minute because I have to read it. That's what that is. <laughs> I know I know that it establishes a, um, being that it's House Bill 1004 and Representative Morrison um, and Representative Path, correct me if I'm wrong, um, it's a lower numbered House Bill. It's a somewhat priority um, of, I believe, the House Republican Caucus, but it basically establishes a small business restart grant program um so specifically i'm gonna have to read it a little bit because i was not up to speed quickly on this it establishes the hoosier hospitality small business restart program to provide grants to eligible entities help them accelerate their economic recovery from the impacts of covid 19. Um, this will be administered through the indiana economic development corporation so that is what i know about it um i don't know if representative Morrison has anything else? Uh, no, yeah, you hit the nail on the head. Very good. I, I, and actually, I was uh, added as a as a, uh, a co-author to it just the other day. So, um, and it is since it's one of the lower number bills. It's an agenda bill. So, um, anything from one thousand and one up to normally, you know, thousand and eight, thousand nine, depending on the year. Uh, those will be our agenda bills and the ones that uh, uh, us as a caucus has said, okay, this is what we really want to make sure we get done and get through. So, uh, uh, yeah, the, this this uh, 1004, Shane Lindauer is the uh, author, um, but uh, uh, so, and then Sharon Nagel is the other co-author. I'm sorry, just kind of going through in my head. But yeah, um, the, the digest you just uh, read or memorized uh, was pretty much right on. And, and our goal obviously is to um, to help out the hospitality 
industry, which has been, you know, obviously one of the harder hit industries um, through all of this. A lot of our manufacturing still went on and, and there was other businesses that were labeled essential, right, that, that uh, were able to uh, um, stay alive. But a lot of the uh, hospitality industry has taken out the chin. So that's uh, one of our specific goals here uh, with this bill. Thank you. I want to add to that, too, um, because I've been working with Mayor Bennett, and I know Senator Ford's also been working on some of these things as well. But if you look at, for example, the OPRA grants that are out there for communities right now, if you are a population of 50,000 or more, you must have a low to moderate income uh, study that allows you to receive funding for certain items. And one of those items is grant funding for small businesses. So although, for example, Terre Haute doesn't qualify for grant funding for small businesses because of the LMI requirement, it doesn't mean that we don't have small businesses still in need. So, um, you know, from a chamber perspective, um, I know these are conversations we've had with Thrive and the Small Business Development Center, really collectively, um, anything that we can do to help any business that is struggling. So I, I would say from a chamber perspective, this would be an important bill to, to support and keep moving forward. Um, because certainly some of these other grant opportunities out there just we don't qualify for. So um, I just want to put that out there so everybody understands kind of how the funding, funding mechanism works. just say something real quick just in tying in with that it's it's similar to you know the distribution methodology that was used for the COVID relief um you know the county got 3.4 million and the city got 1.9 million because they followed some existing formula to deliver those funds but it really doesn't make any sense when 60 percent of the population lives in the city and 40 percent lives in the county you know I, and then in the case of the okra, we're penalized because, you know, we're 60,000. And I get you got to have a place to draw a line. But, you know, as, as Rachel said, there's a lot of small businesses suffering here, just like they are in Sullivan and Brazil and Clinton. And we can't tap into any of that money. And then they beat me up and say, you're not trying hard enough to get that money, Mayor, when, you know, we don't qualify. And so it's just trying to find to make sure with there's not looking for a loophole, but just making sure there's a fairness about these distribution methodologies. Sorry, I'm saying too much today. No, I think it's great. Thank you. Are there any other questions? I don't want to leave anybody uh, not having the opportunity. I see some other familiar faces on here, but I don't want to call them out. Um, anything from anybody else? Oh, no, you don't want to call people out, Rachel. <laughs> Sorry, Chris, you don't count. <laughs> Or you do count. That's why I called you out. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, with all um, with all sincerity, it, it is going to be a very interesting session. So I just want to thank again our senator and two representatives on here this morning. Um, you know, if there's anything that the chamber can do to benefit you, or if you see bills coming down the pipeline that you think we need to make sure the chamber is not only seeing and viewing, but also getting behind or, or opposing in any way, please feel free to reach out so that we can help navigate or help you navigate those conversations. Um, I'll just end with one. We have uh, really 15 more minutes. And I don't think it'll last that long, but just end with one last uh, question for each of you, and then we'll We'll finalize uh, today's session. Um, real quick, and I do this with my team, one thing you're worried about, one thing you're excited about um, that you think uh, potentially won't get done or something that you think will. And I don't care who gets who goes first. Tanya, you have to go first. <laughs> well, for me personally, I always worry um, that the rate of the speed that we go, I was worried that I'm gonna make the wrong vote because I'm not, uh, I don't know all the information on what I'm voting for. So that is a constant uh, worry for myself because I, I like to be prepared and I like to know what's going on. And so, so often things come through and you don't know the details of them. And then after session, you go back and you're like, oh. Um, so there, that's probably, that's usually what I'm worried about. Um, what I'm excited about is I, I really do think that um, that we can make some some really good improvements to Hoosiers in Indiana. Duke was talking about or whomever was talking about tourism and small businesses. Wow, they really need help. I've been on so many conversations with uh, especially about tourism and just the devastating effect of COVID 
Now, as a state with money, from what I understand, we're, we're doing okay. Um, there were there was a lot of concern about how much we were going to lose, but you know the fe federal government gave a lot, and we're really doing pretty well. So what I'm excited about is having conversations where I can help my community and uh, just be an advocate for this side of the state. Thank you, Tanya. Mm -hmm. Senator Ford. Yeah, so I, you know, I'm a, I'm a little nervous. Just uh, I kind of like Tanya, just the, the with the new format that you know some things will you know good legislation will fall through the cracks because it really is a different uh, way that we're things are flowing. A little nervous about you know the whole COVID experience, um, but you know I'm excited. I mean, there's a lot of good legislation out there that can really help folks. I mean from you know, telehealth to some of these uh, grants that we're trying to create to to that we to deal with the COVID outbreak. Um, I'm excited that you know our, our budget. You know, when we thought about our budget back in June, we were going to have a huge hole. I you know I'm glad to see the hole is not as big as we thought it was going to be, and there seems to be some light at the end of the tunnel with the vaccine. So it's uh, I think it's going to be a great session, and a lot of good things will uh, will get done. Thank you, Senator. Representative Morrison, are you able to talk? Yep, yep. Uh, so I'd say uh, what I'm worried about and what I'm excited about is basically the same thing. Uh, so I'm, I'm worried that uh, people, that us, uh, the legislature will use COVID as a reason to do things that, um, that we shouldn't. But I'm also excited because we're going to be able to use it um, as a reason to do things that we should have for a long time, um, namely with uh, some of these different uh, agencies and, and regulations that, that, uh, that were relaxed because of, uh, you know, and some of these uh, executive orders um, that were relaxed then, well, if they were good enough for the last six months, they probably should be good enough for, you know, moving forward. So we're gonna have uh, opportunities um, to really do some good things because of it, but there's always those those opportunities. Uh, sometimes that don't necessarily work out great. But and one of the other things too, I I think is good um, with with everything kind of being a little bit different, and and uh, it seems like maybe not as many bills are going through. Um, I'm I'm a small government guy. The the less we do, I think the the better <laughs> the better we're off. Um, the less we tinker. Um, so, uh, you know, I, uh, I, I, I'm going to go in, I'm going into the session with, with uh, a positive outlook for sure. Thank you, Representative. We did get one quick question come through. Um, Shelly Klingerman um, asked a question. I think, Shelly, your question specifically was about the West Central Defense Network, but I'm going to assume that our most recent activity regarding the F-35 is what you're referring to. Um, and I don't really have an update on the F-35s um, at this point in time, other than we are patiently waiting or maybe not patiently waiting like everybody else. So um, I assure you that as soon as I know anything, I will let um, everybody that I'm allowed to know know and shot from the mountaintops, but I think others might even find out before I do. So if any of you find out, let me know <laughs> so we can celebrate together. Um, but unfortunately right now I don't have an update other than um, we had heard at one time they were hoping to get it done before the end of 2020. That obviously did not happen. So I'm hopeful that um, we'll learn something soon. So, okay, well, I think we can conclude today. Um, I will hand it back over to the chamber. Is there anything the chamber would like to say in closing? I didn't really have anything to add other than um, on January 28th, the mayor is gonna be doing his city update with us. Um, it'll be at nine o'clock via Zoom. So feel free to check out our website um, to register, register or just email me directly. I'd be happy to help you out. Uh, John, did you have anything you'd like to add? I'd just like to thank the legislators for being here this morning and uh, echo Diane that we've got a really good group and um, look forward to see what happens this year. Everybody have a good day.